here today as a part of her American Rescue Plan. Help is here. Help is here. So today, the Congresswoman will come to speak to you all about the American Rescue Plan and the provisions in there as it relates to public education. Congresswoman Sewell will come, and then she'll be joined by the Superintendent of Montgomery County School Systems, Dr. Ann Roy Moore, and the State Superintendent, Dr. Eric Mackey, along with our wonderful Mayor, Mayor Stephen Reed. Now let's receive Congresswoman Terry Sewell. Thank you. Today is a great day in Montgomery. We started off with the 60th anniversary of the Freedom Riders uh, in front of the Montgomery Greyhound bus station, the museum, just acknowledging the great history that lies right here in Montgomery and how far we as a nation have come because of the sacrifices of others. I just want to say today is a great day to be a Wolverine and to be right here at Carver High School. We want to thank your principal and your students and the teachers and administrators for making this possible. I am happy to be joined by the state superintendent, Eric Mackey, and your superintendent, Superintendent Moore. This is a great day, great day. I just want to start by thanking the superintendent of the Montgomery Public School Systems, Dr. Ann Moore. Thank you for graciously welcoming us here to Carver High School, and thank you for your endless commitment to ensuring our children receive the best education possible. To my lifetime friend and colleague, uh, former, uh, but we, we were in what class together? Class of 19, Leadership Alabama. Look at you. <laughs> Look at me, I should say. We always knew you were going to be destined for greatness. Um, but it's a pleasure, Super State Superintendent Mackey, to be here. I am just also thrilled to be joined by the mayor of the wonderful city of Montgomery, who is also here to hear about what the American Rescue Plan has for cities. So let me just start by saying that we know that education is a great equalizer it is how we can change our conditions. It's also how we can change our communities. We know that it is through education that we not only improve the minds of our community, but we also improve uh, our community's commitment uh, within it to make ourselves better. When I think about growing up in Little Selma, Alabama, a public school in Selma, coming to Carver High School, my dad was the high school basketball coach at Selma High School, and so we would come here and pay Coach Sanders. Wasn't the Coach Sanders traditionally a, a coach here at Carver High School? And he, we would come and play uh, basketball, and coming to Carver High School was coming to the big leagues. And I know that the Wolverines, the students that represent Carver today, I hope that you wear as a badge of honor coming from Montgomery Public School System and coming specifically from Carver High School. There is a rich tradition of excellence, both in athleticism and in academics, that is Carver High School, and I know that you will live up to that as well. I am pleased today to announce the American Rescue Plan, which was a $1.9 trillion investment in the people of America by the government of America. It was an investment, yes, a very expensive investment, $1.9 trillion, but in the midst of this pandemic, we realized that people needed help, not just surviving the pandemic, but thriving our way through the pandemic, that the only way that we were going to be able to build back better is if we acknowledge that we need money in our pockets, we need money for our schools to safely reopen, we need to make sure that those resources also include remedial education and summer enrichment because we know that students learn best in the classroom. But we also know that, that this crisis has tested us on so many levels. And it has really laid bare our systemic disinvestment in infrastructure. Broadband became so critically important as we needed it to not only conduct the government, the city government and essential services that still had to go on, but we also needed it for distance learning. We needed it for remote office work. We needed it in order to just survive this pandemic. 
And so we know that we have realized that we have, uh, more than anything, when you talk to parents who have had to teach their children remotely, we have a renewed appreciation for our educators. And I want to thank the principals who are here, the teachers that are here. You all deserve the round of applause. You do so because we know that we entrust in you our children each and every day and that you all were stretched thin way before the pandemic so we can only imagine how stretched you were during the pandemic. We thank you for all that you do each and every day and I want you to know that Montgomery Public Schools will receive $129.7 million to Montgomery's K through 12. $129.7 million. And before I present that check, I have to tell you, nothing is free. We know that, don't we? We know that there are great expectations for our administrators, our superintendents, our teachers, our, 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 uh, you know, our students, uh, there are great expectations that we have. We realize that th we need to make sure that you have the resources to safely reopen. That means acknowledging the CDC guidelines. That means making sure that we um, have the PPE and everything that we need to safely reopen and an acknowledgement that we also need to take care of the staff, the administrative people who keep this school system running, whether it's the janitors, whether it's your cafeteria workers, your teachers, and of course your administrators. But we need to make sure that we equitably distribute these resources. I fought hard to make sure that not only did we give money to the state of Alabama, and yes, uh, Superintendent Mackey, the state of Alabama will receive $2 billion, uh, the state uh, to K through 12. That includes the monies and resources that cities, uh, that, this, that the Montgomery Public School and other city and county school systems get. But you will be expected to be good stewards of that resource and to use those resources wisely. That's the only way that we can actually get resources again. We have to be good stewards of those resources. I know you all know that. And so I look forward to working with you all as the Department of Education promulgates the guidelines about how this money can be used. This $129 million is on top of the money that Montgomery Public Schools already receive. And so this is transformational money to make sure that the next crisis will not leave us flat-footed, that we are investing in our greatest resource, our children, our children. So I want you all to know that we expect you all to get these resources, to come back into the classroom and to be prepared to learn and to catch up to the extent that you must catch up. I tell you, I watching the parents uh, struggling to try to provide, uh, the mayor was talking about algebra <laughs> for his seventh grader. I couldn't imagine it, but I'm telling you, I had trigonometry for an 11th grader that I was trying to explain. And so we know that we were all challenged and that we need to make sure that our children uh, catch up. That's the only thing that I can say about that remediation and enrichment, and I know that you have great plans to do so. The American Rescue Plan includes $2 billion for the state of Alabama, 129.7 for Montgomery County Schools. We know that this money is needed to keep our schools open safely, to make up for valuable learning time, and we also know that not only have we been putting shots in arms and money in pockets, people got $1,400 stimulus checks. For me, I listened to the parents talk to me about the fact that they needed childcare in order to be able to come back to work and that children needed their own resources so that they, we could get their computers if they needed it or they could get the medicines that they need. So we made, it, made sure that the stimulus checks, checks in pockets, didn't just go to the adults in a family, they went to the students, the children as well. So that a family of four not, didn't just receive the mom and dad $1,400, the two children would receive it too. That's $5,600, that's real money in people's pockets. And you know, it's so interesting to me. I could not believe, but I'm very proud to say, 
that I was the only member of the Alabama delegation of nine to vote in favor of the $1.9 trillion plan. And why did I do it? I did it because I believe in you. I believe in the people that I represent. I can't control how people will spend their money, but I know with the calls that we received, the calls I'm sure that you needed during essential services during this pandemic, that people needed help. Those who had could endure, but those who did not have got further left behind. This is an opportunity, a transformational opportunity for us to not only build back, but build back better. And that's what President Biden believed, and I can tell you that's what I believe. Now, I also heard you, Mayor. Many of my mayors said that the first money, the CARES money that came down, came down with way too many restrictions. It came only to the states, did not necessarily come, didn't come to cities and counties. You all were reimbursed for resources, but so many of my mayors, especially in the Black Belt, didn't have the money to spend on the front end to be reimbursed for all of the uh, equipment that they needed, the services. We know that your first responders, your, EPA, your e EMA directors and your firefighters and your police officers worked overtime during this pandemic. And so I heard you. Uh, I heard from you all that, that the, the money, CARES money couldn't be used for lost revenue, and so many of our cities and counties lost revenue. Well, I'm here to say to you, Mayor, that we heard you, and this transformational uh, American Rescue Plan also includes money for our cities. And so I am uh, excited to say that this, uh, the city of Montgomery, and I'm just going to pull out the check. All right. <laughs> going to You can keep it. Right. You can keep it. But do know that the money will come in two tranches. The money to cities and counties will come in two tranches. You will receive your first half of the money. So if you get 42.1 million, you're going to get 21 uh, and a half at the end of May at this year, and the other at the end of next year in May. So it's two tranches. Half of it end of May 2021. The other half. Uh, May 2022, and you have until December 31st, 2024 to expend it. Of course, there are guidelines and rules being promulgated by the Department of Treasury on what you can use it for, Mr. Mayor. And I look forward to working with you and the city council, as well as the county, because the county already got their check, <laughs> and making sure that we are good stewards of these resources. We heard you. I can tell you for a fact that you can use it to close the gap in lost revenue, because I heard you, and I also heard you that you wanted your own money, that we wanted that the cities and the counties needed their own resources in acknowledgement that all politics is local. We depend upon the local sewer, water, fire department, and that is right where our cities shine best and that we trust working with the federal government that you will use these resources to uplift the people. This is really about uh, it's a for the people bill, in my opinion, because it's an investment in the people. Now, getting back to your check, don't think I haven't forgot you now. Don't think, <laughs> Superintendent Moore, I haven't forgotten you. And so I want to talk a little bit as I present this check. Yes, $129.7, I'm going to add all the zeros, $0.7 million. for American Rescue Plan. And I just want to say, they want me to get better lighting for you. They want better lighting.
And so y'all can stand and hold it while I tell you a little bit more about it. Okay, so your resources um, will be used directly to, this is about relief. The American Rescue Plan is an acknowledgement that we need further relief from COVID-19. But as you all may have heard the president talk about in the State of the Union, he has an amazing uh, plan for recovery. It's called the American Jobs Plan. And that plan will be about infrastructure. That means roads and bridges and broadband, broadband for everyone. That, is, that deserves a round of applause. And what I love about the American Jobs Plan, and I look forward to going back and fighting for that and voting for it, because here's what I know. When you invest in infrastructure, you create jobs now, and you build the infrastructure, the highways, fiber optics of the future. It's an investment, once again, in people, our greatest resource. So I look forward to going back and learning more about that and sharing more about that with our cities and our school systems. I think all of us will agree that we've long too ignored our infrastructure. I, there are many a, a, a bridges and roads in my district that kids have to get, get up extra early in the morning in a black belt just to go around a bridge. You know what I'm saying, uh, Superintendent Mackey? And that's not right. They have to get up so early to do that. And so we need to fix our crumbling infrastructure. We need to hire Americans now. We need to uh, invest in workforce development. We need to invest in technical for our students and vocational education uh, and enrichment. These are the things that we want to spend these resources for, okay? And so I look forward to coming back and sharing those good news because I plan on, even if I'm the only one, to vote for it because I believe in you, the children and the people of Alabama. Now I want to close by just saying that the 42 million that the city of Montgomery will receive, the 129.7 that Montgomery Public Schools will receive is just part of the money that's coming to the state of Alabama. I can tell you that in my district, when you add up the money that the American Rescue Plan has for both the cities and counties and towns, towns, little towns, so Pike County, Pike Road will get some money. That city, the little towns, every city and county will get it. Okay. And you add the money up for schools, public schools and public education in the state of Alabama. Just in my district, it's 42.7 million dollars overall. That's amazing in my 14 counties. That's transformational money. And I'm going to take my seat because I do want to hear from the mayor and the state superintendent and the, and the superintendent, I don't know if y'all want to say a few words, but you're welcome to, about what this resource means to all of you. And so as I take my seat, I just want to say that this is a great investment. It's transformational. I keep saying that. Why do I say that? When was the last time the federal government gave money in people's pockets, money directly to our school systems, our public school systems for everybody, not Title I, not Title IV. We're talking about acknowledging that we are in a crisis and in order to dig our way out of the crisis and build back better, we need resources for our teachers, for our administrators, for your staff, for the students so that we can all have confidence that we're opening our schools up safely and that we're acknowledging this crisis laid bare disinvestment. We want to now invest, reinvest in you all, our students. And I also want to acknowledge that this is also about making sure that we as a nation get out of this crisis better. And I think that with the relief plan, which is what I consider the American Rescue Plan, the rescue plan, which will be, uh, I'm sorry, the, um, the recovery plan, which is the jobs plan, the American jobs plan. And then lastly, President Biden announced during the State of the Union that he wants an American family plan where we're gonna invest in childcare, in early childhood education. We're gonna invest in childcare, acknowledging that in order for children to learn, parents must earn. And we need really safe places for our children to safely be while 
our, our, our parents are learning, I mean, are earning. So I think that it's going to be a, a great day, and I know that this costs money, but I also know that we in the, in the American federal government, um, we're going to pay for this uh, because we know that we must, as a community, invest in each other. And so that may mean that certain people who make a lot more money than, than, than probably all of us combined in this room have to pay a little bit more. I'm okay with that. And I think that more importantly, they're okay with that because everybody understands that it's our children. Whether you have individual children in this school system or not, all of you are our children. We need you all to be the very best and the brightest because you're the future uh, Eric Mackey's and you're the future Superintendent Moore's and you're the future teachers and, and, and mayors and members of Congress. You're our children, and in order for any one child to have a chance in this world, we must have a community that's undergirding them and doing all that we can to uplift them. Today, I want to say that help is here. Not on the way, but with this kind of resources, help is indeed here. I look forward to working with all of you and continuing to be partners in uplifting our communities, our schools, and most importantly, our amazing children. Thank you. Well, first I have to say a big thank you to the Congresswoman for the great work she's done. And she said you, she and I have known each other for several years. We were uh, in that leadership class together and spent some time driving around the state on those charter buses. And we knew then that she was going to be very impactful for Alabama's future. And soon after that was uh, elected to Congress, has been doing a great job representing this district since. So I want to say thank you on behalf of your 14 counties, but more than that, on behalf of the whole state for helping us uh, by bringing us these funds to help us do, to steal your word, transformational investment for the future. And, and we've been talking about that inside the school community, that this is money beyond just getting through the pandemic. Uh, we certainly hope that, that we're toward the end days of this as a pandemic, but we're going to live with COVID-19 as an as a endemic sort of disease probably for the rest of our lives. And that's why we have to be out trying to get people to participate in vaccinations. I've, I've been vaccinated. Um, every time I get the opportunity, Congresswoman, to get in front of people, I encourage them. We need folks to get vaccinated because that's how we get back to more normal. But at the same time, this is not just helping us get through it. This is helping us, as you've said, to think about investing for the long term. There will be investments uh, made from these funds, Dr. Moore, that will be in place 10 and 12 and 15 years from now. There are students today who have not started school yet that will benefit from the dollars that will be spent from these funds. And that really is what this is about, and that's what we care deeply about. I know that's what you care deeply about and talk about uh, so eloquently as you travel across the district and even from the floor of the House of Representatives that this is about investing in our young people because we are investing in our own future. Uh, Montgomery Public Schools has done a great job. I, I will not take much longer, but I cannot stand here without saying that we are so thrilled with the work that the school board um, and Dr. Moore have done in Montgomery Public Schools through the pandemic. Thank you for the work that you do. Um, it has not been easy. There have been some tough decisions, but you have been willing to get in there and work with one another um, in person more recently, but mostly by Zoom over the last year. But again, working with each other, talking about how we get through things. I, it's not um, with unknown in this, this room that just a few years ago, uh, Montgomery Public Schools was facing a financial crisis that, that could have gone toward bankruptcy. But you dug in, decided to do the work. Dr. Moore dug in, Mr. Watts out there dug in, and other people had to sacrifice and dig in. And now you've got almost a record um, surplus of funds so that you're able to invest and go forward. And together with these funds and the great work that you all did uh, to get a tax pass that'll start being collected in another couple of years, uh, the future for Montgomery Public Schools is very bright. And these young people out here, 
who represent about 26,000 Montgomerians, um, young people in our schools. That, that is what that investment is all about. And so I have to say thank you to everybody here from those students, teachers, administrators, again, this board, and Dr. Moore, and certainly uh, Mayor Reed and Congresswoman Sewell for the leadership that you have shown in investing in the future of this community. Hello, everybody. Congresswoman Sewell and Mayor Reed, welcome today and thank you so much, board members, um, students, and lots of people who work for MPS are out in the audience today. So we want to thank them all for being here. These are our supporters. Um, I see people, especially our administrators, salivating over this check because they're trying to figure out what we're going to do with it. And so we're going to be talking to them about things that we can do with this money. For MPS, it is great. This is the first time in a long, 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 long time, if ever, that MPS has had this kind of money to do operational things. But I want to say to the students, the reason we're doing those things will be so that your legacy and our legacy will be that we did the best thing for our students in the years to come. And that we believe in you as students, and we know that we owe you just for being a part of MPS. And so we're going to try with our administrators, Mr. Watts, of course, who keeps an eagle eye on how we spend money, board members, how we spend money. Um, we're going to try to do our best to make sure that the transformation that we've talked about with our administrators for over the past few years, we've had trainings on transformational leadership. Remember that, uh, administrators? We've had that training. And so now we have an opportunity not only to learn about it, but also to implement some of the things that we've learned about over the years. So thank you again so much for looking out for us and for our students. Uh, one quick thing about the broadband, you know, we have some students who are in really rural areas of the county. Uh, and so even when we were finally able to give them um, the devices uh, to use the laptops or whatever, uh, then we found out that we had to have uh, what they call MiFi to give to some of the students because they were so far out. And then we had a recall on some of the devices because they were, well, on the Wi-Fi, my five because they'd catch on fire. So we're still toiling with that. Hopefully over time we'll get that broadband out so far that we don't have to deal with that kind of thing anymore. But whatever we have to do, this money uh, will help us to do the best we can for our students. So thank you all so much. Thank you again, Congresswoman, and thank you all for being here today. And let's start thinking about, along with Mr. Watts, because you know he's not going to let us do anything that we're not supposed to do. Uh, let's start thinking about the best way that we can start doing great things for our students with this kind of money. Thank you. Wow, this is a great afternoon. Uh, Congresswoman Sewell, thank you so much for your leadership. Uh, thank you for your advocacy on behalf of the 7th Congressional District, on behalf of all of the residents uh, in all of the counties that you lead and you represent for us in the United States Congress. I think we're the only congressional district that supported this presidential administration in the state of Alabama. So I want to say I think it's appropriate that you uh, be given some of these big checks that I've seen you hand out in Birmingham and other parts of the state. So I was wondering when Montgomery was going to get ours. <laughs> so I'm glad that we got ours. Uh, certainly, uh, the Biden administration and Vice President Kamala Harris, I think, uh, are to be uh, commended and thanked for uh, their unprecedented transformational investment in our country. Uh, this is something for our young students that are here that does not happen uh, every 10 years, every 20 years, or every 30 years. Uh, this happens once in, in every several generations. And so when we think about the impact, even for those that may not have supported uh, the president and the vice president or Congressman Sewell and, and the things that they prioritize, we will still benefit here in Alabama. And so to Dr. Mackey uh, and Dr. Anroy Moore, uh, who've been on the front lines of uh, education here in our state for a long time and certainly have partnered with us uh, at the city, we're thankful. Um, on behalf of the city council, I want to thank our school board members. I want to thank the administrators uh, for the work that they've done behind the scenes. Often a lot of the 
uh, nuts and bolts work that has been done to turn things around is not seen and is not appreciated. Uh, but you don't get to this point without doing some things right. And I think quite often we focus on those things that are negative and those few things that are done wrong, and we don't celebrate those victories and all those things that are done correctly. So thank you all for the work. Thank you for the grind, and thank you for the hours that you put in and that you have done in order to get us to this point. I, I will say to you uh, that we have already started talking about how we would spend the money, but we have made no decisions to this point. Everybody's got an idea. It's like if I told you you hit the Mega Millions today or you hit the Powerball, everybody would say what they would do first. Well, we all have our thoughts and ideas, but we want to make sure that we're working together uh, with our county leaders. We want to make sure we're working together uh, with our school leaders. We want to make sure we're working with our leaders in the community uh, to make sure that not only this money is spent, but this money is invested. Because what this really is about is how we move our community forward. And so when I see uh, Gary Hall here, who's been principal at Carver High School for a long time and many other principals, uh, I know that even though we don't have a city system, even though that I don't have uh, any control over the, the school system, we have a duty, a responsibility to part and uplift our school system because we can't do what we want to do as a city. We can't go where we want to go as a city without education. And that's why we led the initiative uh, to invest in our schools uh, with referendum, I think 382, Amendment 382, to push forward what should have been done decades ago. And so when we say that we owe you students class of 21 and, be, and back, and the classes that will come forward, that's true. So now is the time for us to work together as leaders with your feedback, with your input, uh, with ideas coming through the community, about ways that we can do things differently and do things better in Montgomery. And that's going to take all of us working together, just as Congresswoman Sewell has done in the halls of Congress. And so as I conclude, I just want to say that um, pastors might say I'm peacock proud. And I'm very happy to say that we have an investment and an opportunity to change this community uh, for decades to come. We don't take that lightly. We don't take that with any sense of arrogance or hubris. There is responsibility in that, and there is accountability in that. And we want to make sure that when the record is written about what Montgomery did, the city, the county, the schools, that we have set the stage for not only our community, but the rest of this region and this state to look at us as a blueprint of what we can do when we work together. So Congressman Masoul, thank you so much for your leadership. Thank you so much for your dedication and for really being an advocate for all of us, not only in your district, but across Alabama and this nation. And we'll continue to work with you and we'll continue to work with your staff to do everything we can to make sure that this investment pays off and that everybody is happy with the dividends they get. Thanks so much. All right, well that concludes it, but I would like to say that um, I'm gonna invite the, the school board members to come up and take a picture with us in the check. And uh, then, uh, Mayor, uh, you've already gotten your check, but we can take a picture with you in the school board. And, and so um, I'm going to let my staff organize uh, those photos as to who comes up. But I just want to, again, say to, we, of course, want you, Eric Mackey. <laughs> yep. And the state superintendent, folks. Yep. But I, I, this is a great day for, um, for Alabama, frankly. I, I take no credit in the fact that um, I may have been the lone vo voice. I, I, I often say if Mobile doesn't want its money or Huntsville doesn't, I'm sure you would want it, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> um, but we know that this is about investing in all of America's people, irrespective of who voted for whom. It's really about the children and the future. And so I just, again, want to close the way I began by saying that I am so proud to be in a public school right here in Montgomery in this beautiful auditorium, state-of-the-art auditorium that frankly, wouldn't be here if it wasn't for investment. So we know that investment in 
infrastructure, in our students, in our faculty, in the administration, it pays off. It matters. And so I just want to thank everybody for being here today and look forward to uh, working with you all when we get that guidance. We know that the American Rescue Plan, first and foremost, is about getting through this pandemic. So the resources are all tied to relief from the pandemic and making sure that we're ready for the next potential crisis, that we're not caught off, off guard. So thank you. Thank you so much. And students, if you would remain, we, if, if Mr. Hall would allow, the Congresswoman would. Students, faculty, if you would remain for pictures, the Congresswoman would like to greet with the students. Thank you. Take your check, huh? Uh, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll put business at the city council meeting tonight. I will tell them on your behalf.